Hi, I'm Skyla Carter and you're watching Real Florida Outdoors. Welcome back. Still here in Bonifay, Florida with Nathan Toro at Double T Farms. Nathan, um, pretty exciting stuff that I'm finding out from you. How big an operation, how, how much acreage do you have right here? There's about 100 acres right here on our family farm. Okay. And how many uh, head of cattle? You see some of them there behind us. How many head of cattle do you typically have? About 40. Okay. So relatively modest, uh, small operation so that you're able to keep hands on throughout the whole process, it sounds like. Right, right, right. We, want to, we don't want to have 500 head running over 500 acres because if a customer comes in and says, we want one cow finished on grain or one cow finished on a certain product, you know, we can't manage 499 head and then manage your one cow. It's a small family farm operation that caters right to the customer. Yeah, a, a boutique uh, operation right. for all practical purposes. I would imagine that it would be tough. You know, you point out having 500 uh, head on 500 acres, uh, it would be tough to keep that hands on. You don't know what those cows over the hill are doing, uh, what they're right. getting into. How have you been received in the agricultural community? Do people look at you like you're crazy? You're, you got, you're, you're trying to do something that uh, you, you're not making as much money as you could if you went the other route. What is the uh, response that you're getting from others in the beef business or others in the agricultural business here? I mean, all my friends and family support me. Um, other farmers that, you know, could have similar operations. A lot of people don't want to take the time to get personal with the customer and get personal with the animals and then get personal with the processors and just make that whole loop of relationships. Yeah, and, and I think you put your finger on it. It is all about relationships. From the very beginning, your relationship with that animal, right, and, and that's a very close and up close and personal relationship because you are monitoring that um, that animal all the way through its life. Um, are, are, do you make a living off of this? I do. Uh, and and so, um, anybody who's interested in finding out more about this, would you be willing to mentor somebody or at least share some of your knowledge with them? I would. Uh, farm tours are available at any time. All people have to do is call my cell phone number. Um, now, you, are, you find yourself here in Holmes County. Um, has Holmes County Tourist Development Council or Chamber of Commerce or anybody approached you about the agritourism part of this, the opportunity for people to come from around the country or any, from anywhere, really, and to see your operation and to, uh, as, as an economic development part of the county? No, sir. Uh, in some areas, you know, that's becoming very popular, people coming in and finding out what they're doing on this cotton plantation or what they're doing on this peanut farm. Right. In your case, it would seem like even if somebody weren't in the agricultural uh, uh, arena, that they would still be interested in coming to see you. Say you offer tours. Right. Uh, it seems like it would lend itself. We need to uh, need to talk to Jim Brook and some of the other folks in, in Holmes County and see if uh, there, we can find some interest in people coming by. Because frankly, it, it intrigues me. Um, with your permission, I'd like to revisit you at some point and maybe get a, a little closer look at your operation and uh, maybe follow your progress along and and uh, and see how that works out. Now. How far do you go in the sale of your commercial product? Uh, roughly in, in miles, 
How far do you go to distribute your, your meat? Probably about a 150 mile radius. Wow, mm -hmm. so three hour drive there, thereabouts. Right. Um, have you been able to acquire a pretty good customer base? We have. We've, uh, we have some customers down at uh, Panama City, Destin, and uh, Grand Boulevard, and just some other places down there at the beach. Well, obviously, you're dealing with a discerning audience, regardless of where they're from. Somebody who doesn't mind paying a little bit more. As you point out, you're not paying for all the middlemen, so at the end of the day, I would imagine the price is not that much more than what you would buy in, and we're not going to mention any of the big box stores, but in one of those big box grocery stores. Right. I mean, the, the price is more than what you're going to see in Walmart or any any other big box store, but you're paying for quality. You're paying for, okay, you get to come out here and shake my hand. You get to meet me. You get to see the animals. You get to see, you can get to see what they eat. You know, you get to see the whole operation. So, I mean, you're paying for the security that you're not feeding your, your kids or your family something that's going to harm or hurt anyone. Would it be safe to say that there's less waste when it comes to butchering the animal and then actually preparing it because of all of that stuff that's pumped full? Would there be more shrinkage or more waste that would, uh, that would have to be trimmed off uh, versus the way you're doing it? Now, I mean, even some of our customers even buy beef bones. So, I mean, there's, no, there's nothing thrown away from the animals. I mean, it's close to 100% um, sustainability or, or use. Wow, interesting. How many uh, head of cattle do you end up turning out each year, roughly? Oh, we probably sell 40, 50, okay. somewhere in that, that number. Long term, your plans uh, for the future, do you look to expand that operation, and those numbers? I do. We want to buy more cows. We want to find uh, restaurants that uh, are willing to, to use our product. We're willing to uh, find more customers and, and eventually set up a route here in the community or here in, uh, or in Panama City or other places where we can deliver the food right to your door. Now you obviously work with a packing house, with a, with a butcher uh, right. who, who does all that for you. Ultimately, do you see yourself possibly having that part of the operation in-house as well? At some point, we, we possibly may. I mean, the volume that we're doing right now, they take care of it uh, on time, every time. All the meat's uh, vacuum-packed, weighed, inspected and uh, labeled with my farm name and all of my information. If somebody wanted some custom cut meat, if say I wanted you know, some two inch steaks and I, was, I had a special event coming up and I needed 140 of them, is there an opportunity for me to, co uh, to interact with your uh, butcher uh, and say this is what I want and I want it to be Nathan's beef? Right, right. Actually, you call me if you say you want a five inch steak, a two inch steak, a half inch steak. I call the processor and custom order whatever you want out of uh, my cows or my herd or the cows that I brought them that week. Typically, I, at this point, I thank my guest on the show and, and say, you know, it looks like you're, you're busy. The difference in this operation is it looks like it's pretty relaxed, pretty laid back. Not to say that there's not a lot of hard work. You've got some heavy equipment here, obviously lots of work involved in the cattle industry in general. But it seems like this has this whole place has sort of a serene, uh, laid-back atmosphere. Um, you know, not to go into the psychology of what a cow goes through, <laughs> but uh, it seems like this is a little more relaxed in operation than your typical cattle ranch. Right. Well, I mean, in order to keep the animals low stress, I have to be low stress. I mean, this is just an everyday thing for me, you know, to feed the cows. To, I mean, it's, it's not a job. It's something I love. Yeah. Well, you know, and w once again, I started off the show by talking about the fact that we were here to talk about you having gone through Florida Panhandle Technical College and then gone on to John Deere School. And it sounds like uh, for a young man, you've got a pretty firm grasp on where you want to go, what you want to do, and, and, uh, and you're doing it. So best of luck moving forward. Again, I'd, I'd like to, uh, uh, with your acquiescence, love to come by sometime in the future and, and see your operation and see how you're doing, kind of keep, uh, keep up with your progress. We'd love to have you here anytime. And thanks for taking the time today. I, again, I, uh, I'm impressed. Uh, if you're interested in uh, taking a step back uh, uh, in time almost and, and getting some of that truly good stuff, um, if you're not uh, completely content with what you're being given in the, uh, the big box grocery stores, if uh, you're a little bit leery of uh, all those chemicals and all the fine print on the label when you go to buy your steaks or your hamburger, uh, check out uh, Nathan's operation here at Double T Farms uh, in Bonifay, Florida. Nathan Toro here is our guest today. Um, check it out. Uh, Nathan also offers uh, tours, as he mentioned. Uh, you can come by, 
find out a little bit more about the operation before you, you buy the meats that you want, uh, this high quality product. Um, I'm impressed and I know that you will be too. Nathan's contact information right now on the bottom of the screen. So check it out. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. There's lots more to come from Real Florida Outdoors.